Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm a vigilante, if you use the word before Hollywood got a hold of it. Because originally, vigilantes were people that were enforcing the law because of the lack of law enforcement. Without borders, you're no longer in our country. Legal immigrants, love them. Uh, people breaking the law, that's my problem. And the government not enforcing it. They call me the crazy gringo. This is a picture of people coming from Mexico onto my property. And this is what happens to your fence when the smugglers decide to drive through it. I'm armed to protect myself, but if it's kill or be killed, I will not hesitate. If we get a wall like they built in uh, Israel, I probably will not have to wear a bulletproof vest along the border anymore. Shadow, I think your tongue is on a reel. You have got an extremely long tongue. Before Operation Gatekeeper, it was wonderful. I mean, we had a good rapport with the people down south. They didn't speak English, they don't speak Spanish, but it was always high, you know, and uh, whatnot. But then uh, after Operation Gatekeeper, they watched the gates and they didn't care about the fences in between the gates or the ports of entry. So that's when the cartels got involved and were bringing people out from Tijuana to Cati out here and bringing them north. Instead of climbing through your barbed wire fence, they would just cut it. They've got the battery powered uh, cutters that just come up there and bzzz. Over the years, my wife and I have spent probably $20,000 in fence repair and property repair because of these people. The neighborhood I grew up in, uh, South Park, Burlingame, North Logan Heights, anyway, it was going to pot and there were street gangs running around. And I really didn't want my kids to have to put up with that. So I told my wife, I said, we need to move to the ranch. And she says, well, Bob, if you can find something to do besides being a cattle business with your dad, we'll do it. So I started an auto parts business up here. And we were in the auto parts business for 30 years. I've worn my hair like this since 1955. I was going to be a Marine until I fell in love with her in high school. That's Jeanette. She would have had a nervous breakdown if I, every time I'd been deployed. <clears throat> the day she died, she told me to get on with my life, excuse me, and not waste my time feeling sorry for myself. <clears throat> but she was my life. I consider myself an American citizen. Most people don't anymore. I love my country. I believe in the, in the Constitution. It is my duty to protect my country from people invading it. I'm gonna die, and I don't care how, except I'm not gonna die a slobbering old man in a, in a, in a rest home pushing a, a walker. I'm going out in a firefight. Mi hermano se, se cruzó en el 2009 aquí por el área donde estamos ahorita, por Sonoita. Eh, ellos caminaron cinco días, ya no aguantaron, se les acabó el agua, se les acabó la comida, ya no aguantaron. Eh, mi hermano no quiso dejar a mi primo porque estaba, él se sentía muy mal y decidió ahí morir con, morir con él. Se me acabaron ilusiones, se me acabaron pues ambición de tener cosas, se me acabó todo completamente. Esas ganas de, de luchar por la vida, de ser alguien en la vida, se me acabó porque yo quería dedicarme a esto para, para ayudar a la gente que, que sufre en ese momento. Soy presidente del Grupo de Búsqueda y Rescate Águilas del Desierto. Águilas del Desierto es un grupo de voluntarios, eh, es una organización no lucrativa que ayudamos a buscar personas perdidas que vienen cruzando la frontera, ya sea que los ejes eh, por ciertas circunstancias no aguantan la travesía y los abandona el coyote, ya no aguanten, los deja porque pues ya no tienen agua, ya no tienen fuerzas. Eh, los calores son 
exageradamente altos, poquito más al norte nosotros encontramos en una búsqueda, encontramos tres cuerpos, a la siguiente búsqueda, en una sola búsqueda encontramos ocho cuerpos. Esas personas que necesitan ayuda o estos cuerpos, padre mío. Cuando recibo una llamada de una madre suplicándome, llorando, que está perdido su hijo, que está perdido su esposo, híjoles. Se me parte el alma y digo, pues tengo que seguir, tengo que seguir porque si no lo hago yo, ¿quién lo va a hacer? Amén, amén, amén. Cuando empezaron a construir el muro, pues antes la migración estaba más en el lado de California. Se cruzaba mucha gente de ese lado y empezaron a construir el muro y, y pues fue una estrategia, fue una estrategia porque le fueron cerrando, le fueron cerrando el paso, les fueron cerrando, los fueron arrimando a lugares más peligrosos. Another gallon. Incrementó bastante la muerte de los migrantes cruzando la frontera. Estados Unidos, con sus políticas que ha impuesto, ¿cuántas vidas ha cobrado? El muro, pues es, para mí es una, una manera de discriminación, de, de decir tú eres inferior que yo, aquí trazo mi, mi línea. And we're gonna build the wall, the wall. We're gonna build the wall. Si va a construir el muro, eh, va a ser un poco más difícil de que crucen la frontera, pero más, les va a poner la, ahora sí la travesía más difícil y van a seguir muriendo. No debe por qué existir alguna frontera. Todos somos humanos, todos somos iguales. Parte del grupo ubicaron un lugar donde, donde llegaba mucho el olor a, a descompuesto. Se pusieron a buscar y encontraron la pues la mancha de grasa donde supuestamente eh, murió una persona. Yo pienso que el forense ya lo levantó, pero dejó mucha, mucha evidencia ahí, pertenencias de, de la persona que murió ahí. Una carta, según dicen que una carta de despedida y otros documentos que vamos a mirar ahorita para ya ver a, de quién pertenecía y nosotros poder, poder hacer algo por esta persona para que lo identifiquen. ¿Habían visto estas identificaciones de aquí? República del Salvador. Te amo tanto, Francisco, mi amor. Para usted, mi cielo, me hace falta tanto. Te digo la mera, la mera verdad, yo siento miedo. Miedo al irrespeto al, a la vez al, al desierto, porque es inmenso. Es inmenso que te puede devorar en cuestión de horas. Miras los cactus cuando son pequeños, o las biznagas, sus florecitas rojas, muy bonitas. Y me pongo a pensar, ¿cómo una, un lugar tan feo, tan desértico, tan seco, pueda dar estas flores tan hermosas? Yo trabajo en la agricultura. Yo trabajo en regando ranchos de aguacates. Entonces, yo trabajo de esa manera, yo me gano el, el pan de cada día para mí, para mí, para mi familia. No tenemos dinero, no tenemos poder, pero tenemos esos valores. Humildad, bondad. El grupo de nosotros aquí en el desierto va a, pasar parte, a ser, va a pasar a ser parte de la historia. Cuando hubo un muro, cuando hubo una división, había un grupo de voluntarios que iban a buscar personas perdidas. My husband had an order of deportation. He's living in Tijuana, Baja California. Uh, a police officer put down that he was uh, a member of the Latin Kings. It's a gang, a gang in Chicago. So he's got a lifetime ban. As much as we sent so much evidence, I want to say we sent pictures and DVDs, everything of what he was doing now, it didn't make any kind of dent. Amen, amen. <laughs> I try to come once a week, at least for the weekend. We try to do a lot of things like for the family, for the kids yeah. mostly. So they says, we are strawberries. Don't step on me, we want to be eaten. You know, when I see the wall, I feel like it's that one dividing line that keeps us from being a complete family, from keeping us from being normal in the sense that my kids are deprived of their, of their dad. And I'm deprived of, of him as a husband. Well, there it is, baby. One day. You think? Yeah. I don't want to look at it too much. Why? <laughs> oh, 
Don't worry. I wanted the kids to be educated in the States, but mostly because Aaron is autistic. You can walk sideways. <laughs> and he was receiving speech therapy. He was receiving um, special, going to special day classes. The other big issue is that Aaron doesn't, didn't speak Spanish at the time at all. So I said, let's live on the border. I can go back and forth. It's not gonna be a big deal. Well, hey. It's not an easy situation for kids. They don't understand it. Hannah hasn't asked me, why doesn't, you know, Papi go with us? Or what's going on? Or why can't this, why can't he just come with us? She just accepts it for now because it's, it's normal to her. And it's not, it shouldn't be normal. Waiting in the border, uh, used to average anywhere between an hour to an hour and a half. And now when we go on Sundays, it takes anywhere from two hours to two and a half hours. Bingo. He's the driver and I watch out with the kids. I either feed the kids or we take the baby out and just to kind of keep them, you know, happy. That's the goal. But I want you to relax, okay? Eduardo will step out and we go switch spots. I'll start driving and then we open the doors so he could say goodbye. He'll, he has to hug and kiss everyone. Okay. Right here when you turn on the county box, they, they executed a woman who was in her car, killed her. And then I think it was last week, they, um, they robbed the Copel, the store in the, in the plaza. They robbed them. I don't want to get emotional. <laughs> you know, we have to trust God and to keep us safe. Don't go running around, mommy. It's fun and it's nice, but we have to be safe, okay? Stay close by. I have to try to make the marriage work because I'm committed to it and I love him. <laughs> and I really hope that one day they'll see this entire effort that I've made to have them see their father and have them know that the sacrifice that I did. And I go, and it may not be in my lifetime, but I know eventually they'll, hopefully they'll see that. We, we don't have fences or borders because we dislike the people on the other side of it. We have fences and borders because we love the people that are on this side of it. The, the fencing is an enhancement to agent safety. We've been seeing an increase in agent assaults this year. They're at an all-time high. He's on route about 150 yards north. Every Border Patrol agent I know comes to work every single day with the intent on protecting their community. There it is. We face all types of threats from the south side. There are the smuggling cartels that smuggle aliens are the exact same people that smuggle the narcotics and they're very heavily armed and they don't have any problem using deadly force. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, drive real slow along the border, look for any evidence that anyone's crossed one of these roads. And if we find any foot sign, um, we'll, we'll follow it until we find whoever caused it. A lot of beauty in the desert. And you know, there, there, there are days where you're absolutely, at some point during the day, you're absolutely terrified. Yeah, copy 118, 118 will be clear O'Neill. And then there are some days uh, where, you know, you're, you're trying to fight, you're trying to fight the, the boredom and, and, you know, get through the shift. Working with the Border Patrol, you're, you're, you're providing public safety, not only for the people in the direct border areas, but for the interior. We have lots of people that cross the border that have prior convictions in the United States for, for crimes ranging from uh, drug offenses to murder. You'll generally work in, into the sun, with the sun in your face, it's a little easier to catch the foot sign that way. And then you, if you detect the entry, then you just you know call it in and start following it. 
I've always had a desire to be in law enforcement. Prior to the Border Patrol, I spent six years in the U.S. Army, and protecting my country and uh, being, being a part of that has, has always motivated me. I love my work. I love what I do. I know that when I come to work, I have a purpose every day. And the best days for me are the days when I'll, I'll arrest someone and we take them back to the station, process them, run their fingerprints, and I find out that that person was a really bad guy. And you know, no, no barrier is a be all end all that's gonna prevent all illegal activity. However, what it does is it allows us time to interdict the uh, attempt to enter the country illegally, and it, it acts as a speed bump. It was much harder to control the area before the primary fencing. The human smuggling organizations basically ran wild. There, there are areas right now that, that really need some sort of barrier, whether it's, um, whether it's fencing or, or a quote unquote wall. There are areas that are um, virtually, virtually unpoliced and they create uh, these, these pathways for people to come into the country illegally and people whose purposes aren't known. I'd say this is absolutely necessary. Any country that's not willing to protect its own people by securing its borders isn't doing a very good job of public safety. What I'm doing right now is I'm just painting a, a, one of the longest murals in the world. I'm using the, the, the border wall like a canvas. Aquí en la frontera se vive una forma binacional, bicultural, una, una forma diferente. La gente uh, piensa en español, habla en inglés, paga en dólares, gana en pesos, muchas cosas diferentes. Sabemos que divide, una pared divide, pero estamos haciendo lo que realmente una gente, que sea como, como se llama el proyecto el Mural de la Hermandad. Estamos cambiando la idea del, de, de lo que es, o simboliza el muro en la frontera. Lo pintamos del lado que se necesita, del lado de México. El muro simboliza muchas cosas de tristeza, vergüenza, muro de muerte, muro de soledad, muro de muchas cosas. Pero dándole el color, dándole la vida, dándole, llenándolo con toda la gente, con todos los mensajes positivos, con toda la buena vibra de este lado, no va a haber un muro que nos que nos limite, que detenga, que nos haga sentir mal. Ah, anunciamos que cada fin de semana vamos a estar pintando y la gente se empieza a acercar. Van más de 2,000 personas que han venido a, tra a trabajar, a pintar, gente de todas partes del mundo. No vamos a hablar mal de nadie, no vamos a ofender a nadie. Tratamos de que sea la regla que sea algo positivo, que escriban algo positivo, que sea algo que, que refleje la imagen de nosotros. Sí. Soy de, soy de la ciudad de Guadalajara, uh, viví hasta los 17 años. Después de ahí agarré una visa estudiante y fui a vivir a Estados Unidos, a la ciudad de Lomas. Y vine a Tijuana para apoyar unas exposiciones, porque en el 2008, 2009 había como una alerta roja en Tijuana, en el que nadie quería cruzar, no había proyectos binacionales, no había uh, muchas exposiciones, estaba decían que la ciudad era un poco peligrosa. Y lo que hice yo fue tratar de hacer un proyecto con la ciudad, con el municipio, para hacer un poco más de movimiento cultural. Pues digo, un sueño americano es toda América, pues, pero la gente piensa que el sueño americano más ahí viene en Estados Unidos. También de este lado hay sueños, también de este lado se puede vivir. También en este lado hay muchas cosas que tú puedes crear y cambiar el mundo. Si tuviera la chance de hablar con Donald Trump, I will, I will invite him to paint. You know, I, I respect what I what he's doing. I'm I'm saying that he's the president now. He's he he has to do what he has to do. Escuché de algunas partes que va a cambiar uh, y otras que donde no hay muro que va a poner y que voy a pintar. Pero este. No, no dudo que lo quiera quitar. Todos los artistas que pintamos en la calle, que pintamos algo, sabemos que es efímero. Sabemos que todo mural externo se va a caer. La lluvia, el sol, sabemos que en su momento va a caer. Pero en su momento de trabajo hemos logrado hacer un cambio, hemos logrado hacer que todo esto sea posible, que la gente se una, que la gente venga y pinte. 
Y es un recuerdo que se va a quedar para la historia. administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more. The United States must secure its borders. This is a basic responsibility of a sovereign nation. We have strengthened border security beyond what many believed was possible. This isn't President Trump's wall. This is America's wall. We're going to have strong, incredible borders. We're going to build a wall. It's going to be built. As President Trump looks to build an impenetrable wall, so far only prototypes have been built. For now, his administration has scaled back plans to lengthen the border and instead plans to focus on rebuilding existing barriers, starting in San Diego. So KPPS and iNewsource teamed up to examine those existing barriers using what we believe is the most comprehensive data that's ever been released. We wanted to find out if the wall has been doing its job of reducing illegal immigration and drug trafficking. Using multiple Freedom of Information Act requests, we layered information about the wall's construction over time with other records. Our data shows a conspicuous pattern. Over time, America's wall has reduced smuggling wherever it's been built, but it has shifted those flows into gaps between the barriers, into the ocean, into the sky, and even underground. The reality is that the wall simply ensures that there will be ever more creative ways of getting around it. It's, it's largely symbolic because it has not actually stopped the flows. Um, it has redirected those flows, but it, is, it, it gives politicians a very nice backdrop for a photo op to say, look, I'm doing something. Here's an example. San Diego doubled its fencing under President Clinton in the 90s. As a result, in the neighboring El Centro sector, the share of apprehensions rose 500 percent. Smugglers also started building tunnels under the fence. Tunnel detection peaked in 2009, the same year that fence construction began to plateau under the Bush administration. There were more than three times more tunnels discovered that year than through the entire 1990s. It's like a giant game of whack-a-mole. Right? They, they whack them over here and they pop up over there. Apprehensions in the Pacific Ocean also increased that year by 74 percent. Smugglers have also used drones, catapults, ramps, and taller and taller ladders. The border between the U.S. and Mexico has existed since 1848. That's when the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ended the Mexican-American War. But for more than a hundred years, the border existed only on paper, with the exception of some barbed wire to stop Mexican cattle from grazing on American crops. Today, the wall is made of different materials, all meant to do different things. For example, pedestrian fencing. Comprising about 400 miles of the border, it's meant to stop people from getting into the U.S. It will usually stop vehicles, too. Then there's what's called vehicle fencing. It stretches approximately 300 miles and is meant to stop cars from driving through. In all, there's 653 miles of fencing along the 2,000 mile border. And most of it is pretty new. About 97% of America's wall was built during the past three administrations. Most of that came after 2005 when the Department of Homeland Security acquired the authority to waive environmental laws for wall construction. It cost about $7 billion to build. Trump's wall is expected to cost upwards of $20 billion. Joshua Wilson of the National Border Patrol Council says one of the biggest vulnerabilities for the wall is the thousands of miles of coastline. We've had people try and swim across, surf across, scuba dive, jet ski. Uh, there's no end to the creativity of the people trying to come here illegally. But he says more and improved barriers will help Border Patrol agents do their job more effectively by making it harder to cross on land. It was much harder con to control the area before the primary fencing. The human smuggling organizations um, basically ran wild. Some researchers say focusing construction in San Diego shows that the purpose is more political than practical. San Diego already has two fences, but it's the most populous part of the border the most visible place to build a wall. 
part of the allure of, of building in San Diego is that it is really the capital of the border. It's the largest city on the border. It's a place where uh, a lot of people are going to take notice of this project. He says that unless the Trump administration can address the gaps in America's wall, the patterns in its history will likely repeat. Gene Guerrero, KPBS News.